I'm Trina. I'm, my background is a physical therapist, and I do work for the YMCA Healthy Living Center. It's the medical-based fitness facility around central Iowa, and so what we do is a lot of, we, we bring in a lot of chronic disease, exercise, wellness, and many of which are evidence-based programs. So, how many people here have actually taken a Tai Chi class? Okay, that's a little bit more than normal. That's, that's great. How many people um, have seen t Tai Chi being done before? Okay, that's great. Awesome. For those that may be even less familiar with it, we just give a little bit of history here. So Tai Chi really is an ancient Chinese exercise practice. The, the um, most important thing with fall prevention is its slow and relaxed movement. Tai Chi is shown to improve balance, reduce fear of falling, reduce the risk of falling, and then you can see there's a long list of other health benefits that Tai Chi has. Tai Chi for arthritis, the TCA form, is what we're specifically talking about. All of you probably know there's a lot of different forms, um, and maybe don't know, there are a lot of different forms of Tai Chi. There are some that are more aggressive, a little bit more of the martial, martial arts. Um, and so some people kind of come into, or when they hear about uh, Tai Chi, they have that in mind. And I know this because I've, talk, I've talked to some physicians who talk about how important this is for them to send their patients to classes like this. And they're thinking, really, you're going to have them doing all these aggressive moves? And oh, no, no, no. So we have to start almost from uh, scratch to explain Tai Chi is there's a really large spectrum of Tai Chi. And what we're talking about is very slow, consistent movements. And, and um, I'll kind of go through a little bit of that. The Tai Chi for arthritis, there's different even forms of that. What we're talking about for fall prevention is very specific 12 soon style moves that are very easy to learn, they're slow, and they're great for beginners. And I think that's what has really uh, been, um, why it's been successful for people that have uh, a fall risk. So the Center for Disease Control um, has really recognized um, recently, mo um, probably within the last one to two years, um, is that correct? I think it is just within the last two years that this program is a proactive approach to preventing falls and suggests that it is an effective and sustainable public health intervention for fall prevention. And then I also wanted to give you a little bit of perspective um, worldly. And so the Accident Compensation Corporation in New Zealand sponsors Tai Chi around their country as a preventative measure for falls. And 80% of that form is this TCA form that we're talking about today and that has been approved and recognized in the US. In 2001, the New South Wales Health Department of Australia funded the world's largest fall prevention study in a community setting, which is, I think, key here. The majority of participants were taught the TCA form, what we were talking about today, and this study found that reoccurring falls were reduced by nearly 70%. In addition to that, New South Wales Health Department and many others around the world have funded training for this TCA form. And now the US is on board with that as well. CMS in 2014 created this report to Congress looking at a lot of different community-based, evidence-based programs. And what they concluded um, actually, I think it's like an 87-page document or more. But at the end, what they concluded is that they found that there were four promising evidence-based programs nationally that um, were enhanced fitness. The second one on the list is the Arthritis Foundation Exercise Program. The third one is what we're talking about. The Arthritis Foundation calls it specifically Arthritis Foundation's Tai Chi Program, but that's exactly what we're talking about the TCA today in Matter of Balance. And they demonstrate that there's promising results for driving down healthcare costs for uh, participating beneficiaries with these four programs. Other ones are either new and haven't been studied yet. There's a lot that are coming out. Um, the DPP program they talked about today um, is another example of, of real evidence-based programming in the community that's working. And then I included a quote just to give you that well-rounded, more perspective of Tai Chi. And the quote is from Peter Wayne, assistant professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And I thought was interesting. He's the director of Tai Chi and mind-body research at Harvard Medical School, which I didn't know they had there, which is really kind of cool for myself as a physical therapist that believes in Tai Chi. A growing body of carefully conducted research is building a compelling case for Tai Chi as an adjunct to standard medical treatment for the prevention and rehab of many medical conditions. And um, 
been doing this for a long time, trying to work um, closely with the medical um, professionals, the providers, um, and reaching out to them and um, helping them uh, be more maybe proactive in the referring to community-based evidence-based programs. So when I see that, that is really exciting to me that they would, you know, all of this is important, but you know, we look at our drugs for treatment of disease. We look at uh, preventive measures like going to the foot doctor, vision, all those things. And now to have an evidence-based exercise program as part of that is really, really exciting to myself and hopefully everybody here too. So how does it work? How does Tai Chi work? Why is it effective? Well, Tai Chi teaches movement control. It really focuses in on that upright posture. And as we know, as we age and with chronic disease, we get more feeble, our bones aren't as strong, especially if we've been um, not, not as active our life and we start to get into this position, more of that forward flex. I'm gonna kind of exaggerate, but that forward flex position. And so what also happens in this position is our center of gravity goes away from our strong base of support out here. And so we're in this position, and this is an unsteady or imbalanced position. And so it teaches people that feeling of being secure in this upright posture. Um, and bent knees. The Tai Chi is a, has a lot to do with bending our knees slightly and being comfortable with this. A lot of our elderly who have fear of falling, you'll see them in that kind of fright, uh, fight or fright stage where they're in extension. Also, by being in extension, you don't necessarily have to be um, relying on your muscles. You're working on your ligaments that are keeping you stable. And those aren't as reactive as muscles are. So when they're in that extension, they're not as stable. So we're trying to get them comfortable getting down into that flexed position. It also brings their center of gravity down lower. We're, we're more steady and stable down here than we are in extension up in this position with that forward lean even on top of that. So teaching them the comfort of that movement. Weight transference, transference. This is hugely important. I work with a lot of elderly and it is very difficult for them to get that heel to toe step. And so what they tend to do be on their tiptoes or their balls of their feet. That's very unstable. So teaching them to feel more comfortable with that heel to toe step. That's what Tai Chi is. We're shifting our balance, We're going back and forth heel to toe, so they're getting used to that. Um, and being comfortable with weight shifting. And because it's slow and relaxed, and we're centering in on our breathing, it's less scary, and they have confidence in that. And they believe, this is an exercise program I could actually do and be a part of. 